Um, this is a very common disease, about 30% of the population above 65 years of age um, is affected by, by Parkinson's disease. It's a neurological, neurodegenerative condition. It's associated with um, dopamine deficiency. So your brain is not functioning properly because neurotransmitters um, are not doing their job properly, just to say in layman terms. Um, what everybody is very familiar with, I, I, I believe, um, is tremor that's associated with this condition. Um, you might be a bit less familiar with other motor uh, features that are associated with this disease, such as bradykinesia, which is no slowness of movement, um, rigidity, which is when people are actually opposed to movement, so if another person is trying to move their arm, uh, they're stiff, um, if you will, uh, the impairment of postural balance, um, freezing episodes, which is when people cannot um, uh, initiate movement, and dyskinesia, which is very hyperkinetic movements. They're typically associated with um, a fine motor control task of the contralateral side. Let's say I'm using the mouse uh, pad here, and uh, if I happen to be a late stage Parkinson's disease, I would likely have uncontrolled movements of the contralateral side of the body, which is obviously um, not very acceptable from a social point of view, but, uh, and, and this is one issue actually with management of these patients, but also it's obvious that it interferes with activities of daily living. So what happens in, in this um, patient population, and the disease, uh, I guess because we have uh, Michael J. Fox who's been a champion in this area, um, th th there has been a growing awareness um, of the consequences of this disease. But what happens is that in the early stages, um, medications are pretty effective in addressing the symptoms. Uh, th there is no cure, but uh, uh, the symptoms can actually be managed. But over time, where people develop uh, what are called motor fluctuation cycles, which are very dramatic changes in the severity of symptoms um, over uh, short, relatively short periods of time, um, this uh, schematic representation um, would like to capture these um, by showing the interval between two medication intakes. Uh, when um, the patient is off medication, um, clinically you call it an off period. When the patient is on medication, you call it an on period. Uh, what happens is that uh, the most um, common intervention is based on levodopa, carbidopa. Uh, commercially, it's called Cinemet, uh, the, the drug that's mostly utilized. And then you have, for instance, these patterns of on and off of these kinetic movements that are shown by patients. They happen to be at onset and end of those. They often occur also right in the, in the middle of this interval. But what is very challenging from a clinical point of view is that patients, they don't have a perceptive, an objective perception of their motor status. And therefore, they mix up, for instance, tremor and dyskinesia, which do require opposite adjustments in terms of medication intakes. And they, therefore, they cannot report these to the neurologist. And the neurologist, when sees these patients, um, has only a very short window of time in which the observations uh, can be gathered. This interval um, between two medication intakes is typically four to six hours. And so if you see a patient for 15, 20 minutes, it's virtually impossible to know exactly what's going on over time. So we thought this was a really good application of wearable technology. We developed a study in which we um, gather data at three levels. Um, we perform clinical evaluations using a very commonly utilized clinical scale, uh, the UPDRS, the Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale. We gather data in the laboratory setting to demonstrate that there is a relationship between uh, laboratory data and these clinical observations so that essentially we could build predictors of these clinical scores so that clinicians as opposed to look at a new in index could actually um, receive information that is in, in their language quote unquote which is um, a score that's predicted that's utilized um, widely, uh, very broadly, in a clinical setting. And then we did a field assessment by monitoring people uh, in the home setting over uh, periods of times. The um, 
a UPDRS motor examination is uh, schematically represented by this slide. These are the tasks that you ask people to perform. So these are very simple type of examinations and what, a clinicians, uh, what clinicians do, they do perform qualitative observations as the patient goes. Can they, can they reach um, a, an object? Can they move uh, right and, and left side of the body in a coordinated way? And things of that nature. And so this is definitely possible to capture by utilizing sensing technology. The type of patterns that we have an interest for are shown, for instance, in these two clips. This is an example of dyskinesia. On the left hand side of the body, you actually see movement of, I'm sorry, on the left hand side of the, of the screen, you see uh, movements of the left side of the body. That's actually tremor, that's the off stage, so it's before medication intake. What you see on the right hand side of the, body, of the, of the slide is left body movements. They're actually dyskinetic movements. And as I mentioned before, patients, they actually mix them up often. And unfortunately, you need to adjust medications in opposite ways to address these two different types uh, of movements. And um, if, he, if we took multiple clips over time uh, between two medications intake, you would see these, these kinetic movements to start basically um, not being there at all. So, so on the bottom of the screen, you see this representation over time where you have the on and off stage in patients. And then the bar represents the severity of these, these kinetic type of symptoms. And uh, the higher is the bar, the more severe the, patient, the, the symptom is. And so you see at the beginning there is no dyskinesia, and then it goes up, and then it comes down, and then it goes up again. It's, it's uh, what, what patients often refer to as a roller coaster. Can you capture these with uh, accelerometers? Well, surely, surely you can. And in fact, uh, these are um, screenshots um, from the display of accelerometers uh, from the upper body. So this is what you get at the output, one of the axes, obviously, not all three of them, um, of accelerometers positions on the right and left um, forearm. Uh, these are outputs when people are trying to perform movements of uh, rotation of the former. This is called pronation, supination type of movements. And you can see changes in the regularity of movements. Um, you can see changes in, in the amplitude of movements. So this is pretty obvious from accelerometer data. These are obviously extreme conditions, uh, so e extreme differences from essentially a, 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 a core of um, uh, four, which is the most severe case, to a score of zero, which you essentially have a normal pattern. And this is actually capturing um, bradykinesia, not dyskinesia. Dyskinesia is captured on the bottom um, side of the screen, or shown on the bottom side of the screen, where you see the output of accelerometers uh, from the lower extremities, and um, right and left leg. And these are actually data from the patient I might just show you the video clip of. And you can appreciate these sort of pseudo-periodic bursts of activities, um, of activity that are associated with those um, riding movements of the left hand side of the body that I showed you a second ago. So can you capture these uh, by utilizing fissure extraction and some sort of representation of this information? You can, and we have a number of publications in this area. I'd be more than happy to send you PDFs or, or point you to the references if you are interested. Um, we often utilize just to um, sort of communicate uh, that this problem can be resolved by utilizing uh, features that are extracted from accelerometers. We utilize often SAMOS maps. This is what you actually see on the screen. Um, uh, I'm just going to ask you to concentrate on the left inside of the slide for a second. Um, each point corresponds to a, a sample of, of data uh, collected over time. The different colors, they correspond to uh, different intervals over time. So we gather data every 30 minutes. And so in, in red, you have baseline. In yellow, you have 